Hello, and welcome to this Scholar Point of View kill for the Weapons Refrain Ultimate. I am your lecturer for today, Oxycune, and I will bring you up to speed on approaching the encounter as a scholar. This video is intended for scholars who are still progressing through the encounter, and I will provide insight into how I approach the use of cooldowns and heals. This is not the only way to do it, and there are likely more optimal ways to approach it, but for your first kills, it is worth being on the safer side. The video featured is from my second kill of the encounter, and I have an Astrologian as my co-healer. We start the pre-pull by applying Sucker to the group, and open with the standard damage-focused opening by using Dissipation on the pull, and using Swift Cast on the first Brawl 2, to double weave the Chain Stratagem with an Energy Drain on the second. Once Chain Stratagem is applied, dump all your Aether Flows from Dissipation into Energy Drains. We do not need our Fairy in the opening, and the Potency buff from Dissipation will feed our first Adloquium into deployment tactics on the off tank after the first Miserable Song. Your second set of Aether Flow will be used during the upcoming Missile Shriek, Friction, and Super Cyclone combos. As the ads spawn, there are two paths on how we approach them, depending on whether or not the Adloquium critted. If we did not crit, we need to spend an Aether Flow and possibly an additional Adloquium to top them off between the hits. If we crit with Adloquium, we do not need to give the off tank any extra attention until they take two hits from the Spiny Plume. Top off the off tank with an Adloquium after the first Feather Rain, weaving Fey Illumination, which will last through the Mistral Shriek and Friction. We also want to fit a Sucker between the Shriek and the first Friction, in addition to weaving both Lucid Dreaming and Whispering Dawn, in that order, somewhere between our Sucker and Damage Dealing casts. Use Sucker and Indomitability before the second Friction lands to ensure those outside the bubble are topped. Depending on the mitigations, you may not need to apply a new Sucker before the first cleanse happens, but you'll want to adjust accordingly. As you dodge the second Feather Rain, put down your Sacred Soil in preparation for the Aerial Blast and reapply Sucker if necessary. Once Garuda becomes targetable again, your second use of Aether Flow will be ready. If you don't have Aether Flow going into this, you can reapply your Dot or Use Ruin 2 to double weave Aether Flow with Sacred Soil before the blast goes off. After the Aerial Blast, there is not much going on until the Mistral Songs, but you'll want to use one Aether Flow on Indomitability as soon as it's off cooldown in preparation for the Mistral Songs. You should not need much more than that, but be prepared to provide a sucker if the group goes low before the songs hit. Use both Lucid Dreaming and Whispering Dawn as soon as they're available. Whispering Dawn should be sufficient to top off the group before the Miso highs. For the Miso Hive, you'll be using Sacred Swords to mitigate, and immediately as they go off, use Indomitability to recover from the blast. Garuda should be dead or close to it at this point, and Aether Flow and Deployment Tactics should be coming off cooldown in preparation for Ifrit. Use Adloquium plus Deployment Tactics to take the load of Ifrit's first Hellfire. As soon as Ifrit becomes targetable, you have two global cooldowns before you need to shield the group. A small optimization I like to do here is to weave Swift Cast on a second global cooldown and use it to insta cast Sucker so I can weave Chain Stratagem and an Energy Drain. From there, dump the Aether Flow into Energy Drains, use Lucid Dreaming, and depending on the off tank, Aether Pack them to top them off after the incinerates. Use Dissipation as soon as you're able to. Apply Exagitation to the Searing Winds target, and place down Sacred Soil in the middle of the group when they start destroying the nails. If you were not the Searing Winds target, you can use your Indomitability to keep the group healthy. Depending on the timing, your Fairy will be back shortly before Ifrit's second Hellfire, and you can use your Fey Illumination here and top everyone up with Sucker. Top the group up afterwards with Whispering Dawn. Place your Fairy close to relative north so she can reach all party members. This is a good time to spend your Fairy Gauge up until the Crimson Cyclones.
Pre-position yourself in the middle of the group and begin casting Sucker. You want Sucker to hit after Titan lands. Engage whether or not the group needs extra healing from Indomitability before Earth and Fury hits. Once Earth and Fury goes off, leave the topping of the group to your co-healer. No one is under any immediate threat of death, but do keep an eye on the main tank if they need to be chopped off between the Rockbuster Mountain Buster combo and adjust accordingly. Bring your fairy with you for Geo Crush and use Whispering Dawn to keep the group healthy. Then place a the fairy on the marker closest to Titan. Coming out of the jail and into the first two ults, there isn't a lot of healing to be done. Between yourself and your co-healer, you should only need to use an indomitability to keep the group healthy, and you can spend the rest of your aether flow on energy drains. After the second Jail and Landslide dodges, Titan will start to channel his second Tumult. During this you will have your Fairy use Fey Illumination and from there gauge how much healing you will need. You should most likely only need to use one Indomitability to keep the group healthy, but be prepared in case something goes wrong. You'll want to prepare for the imminent Rockbuster Mountain Buster combo by casting a Logrim on the tank taking the hits once the Rockbuster hits, weaving Lustrate. At this point, Titan should be close to dead, but there is one more Rock Mountain Buster combo to be aware of, so keep your wits about you. Going into Beyond Limits, you want to apply Sucker to the entire group, just before the Magitech bits hit. I have seen people die to this, so it's better to apply it for safety. You also want to spend any remaining Aether Flow here and refresh it so you have a fresh set of 3 going into Ultima. Shield the group up for Ultima, and heal up afterwards with Emergence Tactics and use Whispering Dawn to regenerate anything that is left. Once Garuda is eaten by Ultima, apply a Loquim onto the tank taking the homing laser and use deployment tactics to spread it to the group. Once Ultima becomes targetable, we are dumping all of our Aether Flow into energy drains, as we do not need them for this current phase. We also want to use our dissipation here, as we don't need a fairy either. Do keep an eye on the group's health and use indomitability if needed to keep them healthy after tank purge, but before the Aether Plasm explodes. Use Aetherflow once it is off cooldown and hold on to the charges. Remember to refresh Baya before Ultima disappears. Once Predation is done, you want to place your fairy on the northern center marker A and give the main tank Exogitation and Aether Pact. This should be sufficient to keep them up for the next section. Stop Aether Pact once you start moving for the landslides.
dodge the landslides and position for the upcoming Aether Plasm and Tumults. For these Tumults, you want to have your Fey Illumination and your Suckers intermittently to deal with the ongoing damage. You can spend any remaining Aether Flow as you deem fit here, but you want to have three Aether Flow charges going into Annihilation. If you're using Indomitability, make sure to use it early as we need it for the start of Annihilation. While Ultima is untargetable, prepare the group with a Sucker to help with the Flaming Crush. Dodge the weight of the land, and place down a Sacred Soil. As soon as you move back after the second dodge, cast Sucker and weave Indomitability while slide casting to dodge the final weight of the land. Once the Searing Winds target has been selected, give them Exogitation for safety and move to your position. As you are moving, you also want to use Whispering Dawn to assist healing those around Ultima and put your Chain Stratagem onto Ultima. From here, you play out the rest of the mechanics until you fix suppression. In preparation for suppression, you want to use your Adlocium deployment tactics combo onto a tank and play out suppression. Once the jail has been destroyed, put a new sucker shield on the group and top them off ahead of the flaming crush into tank purge combo. Place down a sacred soil to mitigate both, and cast a sucker such that it lands after the flaming crush goes off. You have a small window between the hit and having to move to feather rain. The tank purge hits immediately after the feather rain, so plan accordingly. Make sure to add another sucker before Ultima goes off. After the second Ultima, we want the group healthy as quickly as possible, but we do not want to use our Aetherflow stacks here. Use two suckers where one is empowered by Emergency Tactics instead. As the Etheric Boom goes off, run back to the initial position close to the center, so you are in range of the tanks, and start casting Sucker. It should go off just after the first pair of orbs explode onto your group. Immediately weave your Indomitability to top off everyone, and move a few steps north for the second pair of orbs, casting another Sucker. For Primal Roulette, you want to space up your Sacred Soils and Fey Illumination to cover all Aetherplasms and Primal Ultimates. Ideally, you want to use your Sacred Soil and Indomitability for the first explosion, Fey Illumination for the second, and another Sacred Soil and Indomitability combo for the third. Be mindful of your MP and keep your party healthy. In this stage, it is better to err on the side of caution and overheal the group. Use your Dissipation to get extra Aether Flow after you have used Fey Illumination. Once the final primal is done, pop, chain stratagem, and dump everything into the boss. Depending on where you are on the damage, make sure to refresh your bio before you get grabbed for the citadel siege. I hope this has helped, and congratulations on your clear! To wrap up, enjoy the screams of my group from the first kill. That's where you fucking rock! Oh, yes! yes. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, I come to the fucking legend of the Finally! Oh. 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 I come to the fucking oh. legend. Either way, oh. it was the last pull. It was the last pull! Oh. Oh, <laughs> no red of yes. sacrifice! Get the gold, let's pull and let's fucking go! Oh. Oh. Who's shaking? Who's shaking? Oh, I
I am. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> just. <laughs> Absolutely shaking. Oh. Oh my god. Yes. Oh. 